Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be continuing my series on congenital heart disorders, and this is going to be the first video that I'm going to be covering, excuse me, a cyanotic disorder, where we expect to see that patient turning a bluish color due to lack of oxygen in the blood, okay? And so on this video, I'm going to be covering Tetralogy of Fallot. If you haven't done so already, please like this video. You're going to love it. Like it now. Subscribe to this channel. If you haven't done so already, don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. So let's take a look. So the description because there's four different issues going on here, guys, and I'll show you in a second. The classic form includes four defects. You have um, ventricular septal defects, pulmonary stenosis, overriding aorta, and right ventricular pulmonary hypertrophy. Um, it occurs in 5 to 10% of all um, congestive heart disease and is the most common what does this word say? Cyanotic, cyanotic lesion. It is absolutely important that you understand when it comes to tetralogy of Fallot that this is a cyanotic disorder. Remember, we have the acyanotic and the cyanotic disorders. This one is a cyanotic disorder. We expect to see that patient turning blue because of that decreased oxygen in the blood. So let's take a look at what's happening, guys. So look how, remember how the, um, what, am I, what word am I looking for? The unoxygenated blood is supposed to be coming through the superior and, and inferior um, vena cava, right? So it comes through here on the right side and goes through the atrium and it's supposed to go down through the ventricle, right? And then go up through the pulmonary artery to go pick up oxygen. Because remember this oxygen right now is unoxygenated. There's no did I just say this oxygen is unoxygenated? This blood is unoxygenated. There's no oxygen in the blood. It has to go to the lungs to pick up oxygen, right? So look what's happening. There, are, All of this blood is supposed to be going through the pulmonary artery to go pick up oxygen. But look, there's an opening right here where there should not be. This is supposed to be separated. So look what's happening. Some of that unoxygenated or deoxygenated blood is mixing with the oxygenated blood. Because remember here goes the oxygenated blood, goes to the atrium, ventricle, and it's supposed to be going through here through the aorta to go out to the body to perfuse all of the tissues. Now you have un or deoxygenated blood mixing with that oxygenated blood going out to the body, okay? And that's what's causing um, the decreased oxygen to the per patient, decreased perfusion to the patient. That's what's causing the patient to turn cyanotic. And if you can see up here, I wrote here, cyanosis, decreased oxygen. Now, I didn't see this in the in this box. However, for testing purposes, very often you'll be asked about um, risk factors. So this is important for you guys to know. So I just wrote it in. Risk factor. Um, if mom had a viral illness during pregnancy, such as rubella, or if she was drinking during pregnancy, that's also a risk factor. So you need to be aware of that. Clinical manifestations. Some infants may be acutely cyanotic at birth. Others have, and let me stop right there for a second. At birth, it is normal for us to see the extremities, you know, the little fingertips or the toes to be a low bluish color, right? But central cyanosis, absolutely not. That is not normal. But in this patient, we may see that. Some infants may, may be acutely cyanotic at birth. Others have mild cyanosis that progresses over the first year of life as the PS worsens. There is a, look at this word, guys, characteristic. What did I tell you about that word characteristics? Characteristic. When you are studying and you see them tell you something's characteristic, stop. Read it again. Pay attention. That means it's important for you to know. There's a characteristic systolic murmur that's often moderate in intensity. So a, a systolic murmur has been linked to a tetralogy of Fallot. There may be acute episodes of cyanosis and hypoxia, that's why they're turning blue, called blue spells or TET spells. Let's stop right there. Notice that the phrase blue spells and TET spells are in italics. If you watch that video that I made on um, students uh, new to the nursing program and I'm teaching you how to study, one of the things I taught you, when you see those italicized words, pay attention. There's a reason they change the, the font, right? They want you to remember this. When you see blue spells or TET spells, your mind needs to be going to Tetralogy of Fallot, okay? Anoxic spells occur when the infant's oxygen requires or excuse me, requirements exceed the blood supply. So 
when would their oxygen requirement surpass the blood supply that they have? Anytime they do anything that we require more oxygen, such as what? Crying. <sighs> Crying takes energy. Energy requires oxygen that this patient doesn't have. So after crying, we would expect them to turn more blue than normal. Or what else? Feeding. I've talked to you guys about that when I talked about COPD, right? Feeding requires energy. Energy requires um, oxygen. So after feeding, we expect to see them turning blue because it's requiring oxygen that they just don't have because it look, look at what's going on up here. Again, the deoxygenated blood is mixing with the oxygenated blood and going to perfuse the tissues. All right, let's keep going. Um, so the noxic spells occur when the infant's oxygen requirements exceed the blood supply, usually during, during crying or feeding. Complete repair. Elective repairs usually performed in the first year of life. Indications for repair include increasing cyanosis so that then becoming cyanotic, it just gets worse and worse. When you see that word progressive, that means as time goes on, it only gets worse, okay? Progressive or increasing cyanosis and the development of hypercyanotic spells, those TET spells, those blue spells. Prognosis with improved surgical technique, there's lower incidence of dysrhythmias and sudden death. Surgical heart block is rare and heart failure may occur postoperatively. There goes your tetralogy of Fallot. All right, guys, I got more videos coming your way, just like I did the complete series of acyanotic heart failure congenital abnormalities. I'm going to also do the cyanotic um, hypoxic decreased oxygen congenital heart defects. So please, in the comment section, let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know if you'd like me to cover something more extensively. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And also... I've been seeing your comments, guys. Thank you so much for uh, helping my algorithm. Um, please put something in the comment. Let me know what you think about the um, my video because it shows up on more people's pages the more that you guys um, engage and comment. I've been seeing the comments about my next YouTube live. And I promise very shortly, within the next week, I'll make an announcement on my next YouTube live where I'm going to continue teaching you guys priority delegation and test taking skills. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video and you guys see me on the next video.